Hello, welcome. My name is Carol, and this is your playful and fun series um, focusing on turtle speed. So if you don't know about me, I love turtles, especially sea turtles. I'm even wearing a little shirt here. Um, we're going to go over some prop suggestions, um, gather anything you have around your house. And then, as always, go at your own pace. We are going to do much slower pace than our typical flow class. So just keep that in mind. Um, I know sometimes I rush into, okay, here's warrior two, but we're gonna actually slow it down today. You might find it interesting. So we're going to need a chair. Could be any chair, I just have this metal one. Uh, one or two blankets, two blocks, and then a bolster if you have it. Um, completely optional, I'll show you versions to use something else other than the bolster. So our starting position is going to be up to you. So if you want to start seated, um, sitting on some kind of height, so either the chair or some kind of prop, or you can start in a reclined position. So if you are in a reclined position, support your spine in some way. So either padding um, with a blanket or a towel, just so you have a little bit of cushion. And we're gonna start with a pranayama. So if you're laying down, you could support a little bit behind your head and neck as well to make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, but keeping your knees bent, so the soles of the feet are on the mat. So I'm gonna sit up just so I could cue and talk a little bit, but I think, you know, listening to your body, if you wanna start um, seated or Reclined. Sometimes, you know, just laying down at the start of a yoga class <laughs> sounds like a great idea, right? So finding your good seated position. And if you are seated, I want you to really focus on aligning your spine. So starting at your pelvis, even tilting a little bit forward and back to find where neutral is. Um, give me your time, self time to shift around. So any additional props you can take to support knees, for example, just making sure you feel comfortable. And if you have decided to sit up and you wanna lay down later, it's fine with me. <laughs> All right, so we're first going to Position our tongue to lightly rest on the roof of the mouth. And seal your lips to breathe through your nose. If you're still shifting around, just make sure you're aligning your spine. So starting at the pelvis. And your mind's eye, travel up your spine. So just visualize where your low back is your upper back, releasing your shoulders. Then drawing your head a little bit backwards so your ears are over your shoulders and then a slight tip of the chin to the chest, just a slight tip. Hello, welcome, my name is Carol, and this is your playful and fun series for the turtle speed, so slowing down the flow. <laughs> um, we're gonna go over prop setup, and then I'll give you plenty of time to get comfortable in a seated position. Props will be a chair, two yoga blocks, one or two blankets, whatever you have around the house, and optional yoga bolster if you have that. So starting in a seated position, I want your back to feel comfortable. 
So I like to sit on some height, meaning sitting on a bolster. Um, but if you don't have a bolster, I encourage you to start seated on your chair. Really being mindful of padding up. So maybe taking the blanket underneath the feet. So a little bit more cozy. And again, if you're sitting on the bolster, support underneath your knees with the blocks. And I encourage you to fidget around right now. <laughs> so I'll, I'll detail a little bit more about what we're doing as you get settled. So this turtle speed, we're invoking the spirit animal of the tortoise today in class. So I love turtles. <laughs> you can see I'm wearing a sea turtle shirt today. Um, we're getting in and out of poses at a slower speed. So think around six seconds, but I'm not gonna be actually counting to you. So I suggest for class either counting in your head or creating a three second inhale, a three second exhale to get into the position that we're going. So for example, if it's raising the arms, I'm gonna use a whole breath cycle to get there. So think of inhale, exhale, and then I'm there. So consider that in class, um, but really don't get too hung up about the time duration to get into the practice. I want it to just be a slower speed kind of pump the brakes on our lives so when we get off the mat, we know that it's safe and healthy for us to slow down. The pranayama that we're going to start with is called the microcosmic orbit breath. It is part of a yin yoga practice. You could also call it a chi circulation we're looping the breath in a visual pattern in our mind's eye around the upper torso. So I'll cue you, but if you ever feel that it's not a comfortable breath cycle to visualize this, just let it go. And just focus on the breath coming in and out of your nose in a steady manner. So hopefully you shifted around enough <laughs> I delayed and gave you enough time to shift around. And pausing for a moment, noticing where your spine is located in space. So think of the spine starting at the pelvis. And at any point, if you want to soften your gaze or close your eyes, whatever feels safe for you to do, please, please do so. Tracing the line of your spine up the back line of the torso, so the low back, just to notice how that feels. The upper back, releasing any tension in the shoulders. And then drawing the head a little bit back to align the ears over the shoulders and a very small tip of the chin to the chest to elongate the back of the neck. Palms can just rest in your lap and your tongue lightly rests on the roof of your mouth with your lips sealed to breathe in and out of your nose. Now before we get into visualizing this orbit, establish a connection to your breathing. So allow a light, silent, slow, Inhale and exhale. So the volume is not full to lung capacity. It's not your deepest breath. Just a comfortable in and out. Let's do this a few more rounds. 
And then I want you to draw your attention to your lower belly. So this is your second chakra. Just a little bit underneath your navel center. I want you to set your personal intention for class. And as you set your intention, imagine the energy in your body starting to stir in your low belly. Starting the visual ascending orbit. So as I read this, just continue to breathe in and out in a comfortable manner. I'm just going to let you know what the pattern is for our visualization. So as you inhale, you're going to follow the breath starting at the low belly, down the front and around the pelvis and then start up the back line of the body. So think of the entire length of the spine from tailbone all the way up to low back, upper back, neck, crown of head. And ending the inhale, so it's a very quick loop at the third eye center, the space between your eyebrows. So it's all on your inhale. You're making a quick loop around. And then you're going to pause there. And then your descending orbit will be from the third eye center, down the face, the throat, the heart, and back to the low belly again, pausing. So as much as you can, as you inhale, follow that rather fast loop around the back line. Think of low belly to third eye. And then your exhale is from third eye back to the low belly, cascading down the front of the torso. So you're orbiting around the entire torso from crown to tailbone. As you're doing this, you're actually connecting with all seven of the main chakras. The yin and yang meridian lines. You're gathering any stray energy and giving it kind of a whirlpool effect. So just like you make a whirlpool in the summer around the perimeter of a pool, you're causing the energy in a healthy, good way to move and flow. Just continue this orbit connecting with your breath. Couple more rounds. And then as you let that visualization go, just linger for a few seconds. Just notice how you feel. And 
can open your eyes if you close them. And if you are in a chair, you can stay there for this part. We're just going to work on opening up shoulders and also neck. If you are in a seated position, please switch out which shin is in front. And if you want to stretch out your legs for a moment and then tuck them back in and readjust your seat. So starting with a little chest expansion, just interlace your fingers behind your low back and draw your shoulder blades together, taking your chin slightly up and then slightly down. release as if you're hiding your turtle shell hunch up your shoulders and then release it down just do that two more times and exhale one more time and we're going to tee out our arms and bear hug or eagle if that's in your practice i'm just going to show bear hug today so your right arm trying to mirror you is on top trying to line up the elbows as much as your shoulders will allow you're going to gently guide the elbows to the left as you gaze right. So a little spinal twist. And then come back to center. Switch out the arms. So now left arms on top, drawing it to the right, gaze to the left. coming back to center. Now this is just for fun. <laughs> Hunch up your shoulders. We're going to draw one shoulder in a forward rotation and the other shoulder in a backwards rotation. Not super easy, but I have a trick for you. So we're going to start with both shoulders lifted up and you decide which shoulder is going to go back and which shoulders are going to roll forward. I like to put my fingertips on my shoulders to help me. So it kind of looks like, <laughs> like a weird shoulder roll, I know, but it's kind of fun to do. Now watch, pay attention which one's going which direction and pause. Start with the shoulders lifted and then with your fingertips helping, go the opposite direction. And this is probably going to feel like the more difficult direction because it wasn't the one that you initially went out of the gate with. <laughs> so just have some fun and then both shoulders, roll them forward and then roll them back. Now let's find a comfortable position for tabletop. And either take your two blocks for underneath your forearms or your bolster. I'm going to take some padding for my knees a little bit behind the center line of the mat, just giving myself enough room. So we're doing cat cow on our forearms. So a little bit more in the upper back region for our focus. Sometimes the bolster is a little too squishy. You might want the blocks, but you could decide what feels comfortable. So as you arch up into that cat pose, draw the shoulder blades away. And then cow pose, slightly gaze forward, drawing that sternum, the center of your heart space, down to the earth. Just continue this. And really slow. And at any point, if this is just not working for you, just take your typical tabletop cat cows. Good. And just one more round there. And I'm just going to take my bolster and scooch it off to the side here. So we'll move any blocks away. Then we'll take spinal flossing. So we haven't done this one in class before. I want you to tuck your toes under so you're starting in your tabletop. And it's really important to 
head underneath your knees here. You're going to walk your hands just slightly forward. And as you gaze forward, I know it seems counterintuitive, you're going to gaze forward and then sink your hips back. So continue looking forward, tilting chin up, sinking hips back. And then as you tilt chin to chest, arching the upper back, you're going to send your hips forward and down. So it looks very similar to a kneeling plank, it's like this rounded back. So gaze forward again, sink hips down. I'm keeping the toes tucked under the entire time. And then chin to chest, hips go forward, releasing down. Let's do this one more time. Slight gaze forward, sink hips back. Tip chin to chest, sink hips forward and down. Now come up to a kneeling position and shake out your wrists. Now we're going to turn. So I'm using the long edge of the mat in front of me into gate pose. So I'm just taking one leg out, making sure that that knee is padded. And the leg that you took out, just aligning that heel with the front knee. We're first just going to warm up the muscles here. So warming up the joints, bending and straightening. Just flow and back and forth. And then keeping the knee bent, we're going to work that front hip crease, leaning the torso forward and back upright. So we're doing a lot of in and out of warrior two, half moon two today, etc. <laughs> Stay tuned. So we're just warming up the joints. Now take that leg out as straight as you can. So you see that my heel is down, my toes are kind of floating, that's fine. And again, we're going to just hip hinge to that front hip crease. So think about where the top of your pants just naturally creases when you lean forward. All right, let's take it on the other side. Go switch it out. <laughs> a little bit of balance challenge there. All right, and then bending and coming back up. So this should feel like a pain-free range of motion. If you need to make any adjustments to the padding underneath your knee, or even holding onto a chair for this. All right, one more time. And then keeping that knee bent, just hip hinge. So I'm keeping my torso really neutral, just bending into it. So think of triangle pose. And then try to straighten that leg as much as you can. Heel down, doesn't have to be the whole foot. And hip hinge there. All right. And now let's clear the mat off so we have enough space. Coming into a downward facing dog. And I'm going to do bent knees, working on lengthening the torso. Sending the hips up and back. And then bending into one knee and then the other. Going really slow here. Pedaling or walking the down dog. And then lift both heels high and then sink both heels down.
and then pausing, holding your downward facing dog. Then bend your knees generously to come into your forward fold. You're going to come into a rag doll, so bend the knees deeply. Let's try to hang your head. You could sway side to side. And very slowly, I'll be saying that a lot today, <laughs> hands on the thighs for support. Bend the knees deeply to sink the hips back and then roll up. All right, shake it out. Let's grab our chair for support. We're going to do heel lifts to warm up the calves, work the hamstrings. So I'm going to make sure that all of the chair legs are on the mat so it's really stable. And begin just by standing behind your chair and you can judge the distance as we go and adjust. Feet about hip distance, maybe slightly wider. And I want you to think of lifting straight up and straight down instead of lifting and leaning forward. So before you even get started, engage the legs, the glutes, even engage your abdominals. So you're really sturdy and you're going straight up lifting the heels with the support of the chair. So maybe just lift a little bit for right now. Just testing out the water. And then lower down. You might look like I'm not doing anything. <laughs> just lifting and lowering. And in your mind's eye, or maybe look down for one round, the entire ball of the foot, so between the toes and the arches, all the way across your foot. So big toe to little toe. That's where I want you to make full contact with the mat. So your feet aren't rolling in or out. All right, a couple more rounds. Just lifting, maybe trying to go a little higher and lowering. Let's try for that. Turtle speed, six second lift, a slight pause, and then lower down very slowly for that six seconds. So count to yourself, I'm not gonna count to you. Let's try to heel lift, very slow. Engage all the muscles that you can, <laughs> maybe ones that you forgot about, squeeze it. Try to hover, lower down slowly. And just do that one more time, real slow speed. And then one, our typical speed, just lift and lower. And then bounce it out, just lifting alternate heels like you're jogging in place. All right, we're still gonna use our chair. I'm just gonna push it as far forward as I can where it still feels very stable and it's not gonna move away from me. Just making sure you have enough space to step back into a warrior one or a very modified slim A. Guess what, we're doing the heel lifts again, yay! <laughs> Now, if the heel lifts are not working for you, skip them. It doesn't matter. Um, so we're working in a mode that is, you know, very playful today. So, I mean, I, I'm wearing a turtle on my shirt, right? <laughs> it's okay to skip something that's not working. All right. So let's start, again, that comfortable distance from the chair. Um, the first round will go a little quicker, and then we'll slow it down for two rounds and then the little quicker speed again. So now lifting straight up with the heels and then cactus your arms. 
turn your torso to the right, keeping the heels lifted. I know. Coming back to center, twisting around that little rib cage to the left. Ooh, you gotta hold on, it's all right. Coming back to center, heels down. Take your right leg back into warrior three. Landing softly to warrior one. My arms are still down by my sides. We're gonna do a little spinal flexion and extension. So open up the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together so you're opening up the front of the body here and you're working the back line of the body, a little spinal extension back then. And then as if you had a big beach ball in front, make that turtle shell round forward. Oh, feels good. <laughs> Shoulder blades pull away from each other. So now you're really contracting your abdominals to make that curved shape even greater. Do this two more times. Keep the legs in warrior one. And there's one more. Neutral spine coming back into warrior three. We're just using it as a transition to step forward again into mountain pose. So that was the right side. We're gonna go do in the left side. So this is our typical speed and then we'll slow it down and then do it one more time. So now left side, here we go. <laughs> Heel lifts, but we're gonna start our rotation to the left first. So lift the heels, engage everything you got, turn to the left, center, turn to the right. Center, land the heels down, warrior three. Warrior one, land the back foot down. And make any adjustments to your warrior one footprint. Three times, opening up, and then arching forward. Neutral spine, going back up, warrior three. So I'm using the chair the entire time, but you could always try to test your balance as well. Coming into mountain pose, shaking it out. So now let's slow it down. <laughs> so slow is not always easier, right? <laughs> we're, fi we're finding that out, yeah. <laughs> Way to state the obvious there. <laughs> so now lifting the heels up, cactus the arms. Slow rotation to the right. Center. Slow rotation to the left. Center. Lower the heels down. Lift the leg very slowly. Warrior three, right leg back. Warrior one. We're only gonna do it one time because we're doing it so slow. Open up. Round forward. Neutral spine. Warrior three. Mountain pose. Other side. Heel lift. Turn to the left. Center. Turn to the right. That chair is there for you. Center. Lower the heels down. Warrior three, left leg, go back. And notice if you start out really fast, like I kind of had some momentum there, I had to stop myself and slow it down. 
warrior one. Back bend. Round forward. Neutral spine. Warrior three. Mountain pose. And then release. All right, shake it out. <laughs> So let's keep our heels down just for our typical speed. So Urva Stasana, cactus your arms, twist to the right, twist to the left. Coming back to center, warrior three, right leg back. Warrior one, let's skip the back extension as well. Coming back up, warrior three, mountain pose. And then again, cactus your arms, rotate left, rotate right. Coming back to center, hands on the chair, left leg, warrior three. Landing the back foot down, warrior one. Return again to warrior three. Landing finally into mountain pose. And just a Make an observation. Did you like the slow movement faster? Or maybe it's the combination of two. So let's find a little calf stretch. So I'm just gonna move my chair a little bit forward. Um, you obviously you don't have to. I just wanted to get my blanket. We're gonna make a sushi roll out of the blanket. Just rolling it up. And you'll note if this is too thick, um, you could always unroll it a little bit for yourself. So that chair is there for your support as we step, now heels down, just stepping the front of the foot, so like think of the front half of the foot on the roll. Your heels are on the mat. And if you wanna bend the knees for a moment and then straighten the legs. Doing a calf stretch all the way up the back line of the leg. Especially after all those heel lifts. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of relief. <laughs> I'm being nice to you right now, right? <laughs> Just breathe and enjoy. And then step off the rolled towel and you could kick it off to the side. Just make sure it's out of your way. I don't like to bend down unless I really have to. Let's take our chair and turn it sideways. Meaning the back of the chair will face the front edge of your mat. I know that's hard to see because I, I have a backless chair. All right, we're going into warrior two to half moon two, which is a balance. It's similar to warrior three, um, but it's an open hip position. So turning into warrior two, my front foot is just going towards the chair. I'm stepping fairly close to the chair, but if I bend my knee, definitely not going to tap the chair in any way. Now typically we have a pretty wide range for our warrior two, but just test it out. So I like to test out things where we commit to where our feet are. If your foot is really far back, it's gonna be hard to kind of, uh, <laughs> find, you know, lift the leg. So almost like come and lift the leg and then land the foot down. And then that's where I want your foot to be for warrior two. So a little shorter of a stance. All right, so typical speed first. And we're gonna take a little different variation with our arms, almost like we're tucking into our turtle shell again. Um, elbows in towards the sides. Let's start with palms up for this side. So bending the front knee. Arms go out. Remember, we're going to do this slowly soon. Arms go in, straight in the front leg, and then lean a little bit forward, slight bend to the front knee to find the half moon two shape, and then landing down, straightening the front leg. 
So let's do that again with cues slowly. So starting palms up, elbows in, bending the front knees, slow it down. And you don't have to bend that much because we shorten the stance, so really go slow. Arms out. Arms in. And then straighten the front leg. Land the hand down very slowly. Secure yourself with both hands. Start to lift the back leg. Lower it down. And if you're going at a little different pace than me, that's absolutely fine. I'll give you plenty of time to catch up. And slowly back to center. All right, no cues. I will do it along with you though. All right, typical speed, bend the front knee, arms out, arms in, strain the front leg. Find your position on the chair, lift into half moon two, and then lower down. Whew. <laughs> it kind of becomes a moving meditation when you slow down, so maybe not the first time you try it, but hopefully you try this video again and the second time is a little bit more relaxing. All right, so let's take it on the other side. Um, before we do so, I just want you to pause in mountain pose. You can close your eyes. And if you like a little sway side to side, as if the wind is kind of blowing. Or standing still, either way. Just notice any areas of tension that you have. And try to release it. So maybe shoulder rolls, head and neck. Again, we're breaking up the momentum, so allowing a pause. So when we step off our mat when yoga really begins, we are reminded as we practice that breaking up the constant momentum of our day is a really good, healthy thing for us. So taking those little five minute breaks, they really do add up during your day. So let's find Warrior two, other direction. So we did palms up. Um, let's go palms down this time. So finding, again, <laughs> let's test it out. How far away should that foot be? Landing down, so a little shorter stance. All right, so elbows into your turtle shell, palms face down. Bending in, so typical speed here. Arms out. Arms in, straighten the leg. And then finding your hands down on the chair, lifting into half moon two. Lowering down, sorry about my creaky chair. <laughs> I tried WD-40, it didn't do anything. All right, so slow turtle speed with cues. Bending the front knee, slowly slow it down. Pump the brakes. Reach out. And in. Strain the front knee. Find your chair. Lift the back leg. Lower the back leg. And then come back up to start. One more time on your own. I'll do this with you.
taking your time. We're just going to do it one more round, typical speed, which might seem fast now. Bend the front knee. Reach the arms out. Toss the arms in. Strain the front leg. Find your chair support. Lift the back leg in two. Lower it down. And slowly come out. Whew. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to need our chair anymore. So if you want to take that really far away, And then we're going to come down to child's pose. So I like to take something to pad under the knees. I'll take a blanket here. And if your knees are not appreciating child's pose today, um, simply roll onto your back and hug your knees into your chest, drawing your knees a little outward. So for child's pose, we take our knees a little bit wider. So imagine me on my back right now, <laughs> like flip me over <laughs> like a turtle flipped, right? And just rest down. And if you enjoyed, you know, having some kind of props underneath your head and neck, you can do that. Um, taking some blocks underneath your forehead. And just release here. I'm not trying to do anything besides just get comfortable. And then come up. We're going to release down onto our belly completely into Sphinx pose. We're not going to be here for very long, but it's just a nice, healthy stress on your low back. So you'll feel some sensation there, but not pain. And it's your choice if you engage or release the glutes here. And then also your abdominals, if you try to lift your low ribs off the mat, or if you keep them releasing down. And then lower it down completely, supporting the forehead. And just rock your hips left to right. Being very mindful and coming up into a seated position. So I'm going to sit on my bolster. If you have a chair, or <laughs> if you have a chair, <laughs> forgot where I was there for a second. Um, if you want to sit in your chair for this, that's fine. Um, or just sit on a bolster. So I am just sitting in Sukhasana, easy seat. We're going to do the turtle mudra hand gesture. Um, turtle in Sanskrit is karma. So think of karma, but instead of K-A, it's spelled K-U, so karma. And it's slightly complicated, so I'll do it twice. So even if you want to watch the first time and then join me the second time. So I'm not mirroring you for this. Um, it's hard enough for me to remember it without like trying to mirror it. So your right hand, curl your middle, and your ring finger in. So you're kind of making a, what is this, a rock and roll sign? Taking palm down onto the left hand's palm. And you might even notice that it's kind of lining up for us already. So your right thumb to the inside of the left wrist, the right index finger touches the left thumb 
and the right little finger touches the left index. And we have these three fingers hanging out from our left hand. Just curl them in. So I'll try to show you that. <laughs> so technically, and I'll do this again, this looks like the head tucked into the shell and the, and the two legs. So our tortoise mudra. Uh, let's do that one more time. So right hand, curl in middle and ring. Place the right hand on top of the left, palm to palm. Right thumb on top of the left inner wrist. Right index finger to left thumb. Right little finger to left index. And then curl the remaining three left fingers in. And hold this in a comfortable position. Feel free to close your eyes. So we are connecting to this turtle mudra to restore our senses. Um, really, it's our senses to rest inward, to be restored completely, and to allow yourself to live with both clarity and vitality. So think of a turtle, very long life, it's the master of conserving energy. So our mudra supports drawing inward towards self, just like a turtle into its shell, both for safety and restoration. Cultivating an inner calm and silence. And I love the quote by BKS Iyengar, the yogi's life is not measured by the number of his or her days, but by the numbers of his or her breaths. So think of your breaths as the length of your life instead of the days. Trying to slow down and enjoy each moment. the mudra and still just pause. So we're opening the eyes. Switch the direction of your legs. If you're sitting in a chair, just stay where you are. Um, simple spinal twist. So lift up and then turn. Unwinding, coming back to center, and it's taken to the other side. So I'm unwinding, and I'm going to set you up in a suggested shavasana shape called Stonehenge. If you find that you just want to hang out in child's pose or any other shape, please um, take that. You could use a bolster and two blocks for this, but if you don't have the bolster, what you'll do is use your chair seat. So making sure that you have head and neck support. So again, I'm sending you up, but then I'm, gonna, I'm going to sit up and hold space for you. So again, this is either a chair or we're going to make a heightened um, prop set up for our bolster. So taking the blocks at the highest height, I would say a hand spread distance apart. Seems to be pretty solid. And 
always say this joke. I always put this not in the right distance between like where my head goes and where my bolster goes. So set up the bolster knowing that you may need to adjust where your head support is. <laughs> Give it a little shake test, make sure it's solid. All right, that's pretty good. So you're gonna recline down very close to the bolster or again, your chair. If you have a metal seat, please pad it. And then the back of your knees is gonna be at the very front edge of this bolster. You're gonna lower all the way down. Oh, I actually did that pretty good. <laughs> Glad I got it on video because I never get this set up correctly. And then the sit, this is Stonehenge. So this is very similar to a legs up the wall. You're getting a lot of healthy lymphatic fluid drainage assistance back to the heart. Helps your immune system. So I highly encourage doing this type of setup with bolster the chair or legs straight up the wall for at least 10 minutes a day. So we're gonna be here for about seven minutes. Just find your comfortable position. And if you get uncomfortable at any time, just come out of it. And returning to that chi circulation breath, that microcosmic orbit. any inhale and flowing it starting from the lower belly looping around the pelvis up the spine on the back line of the body around the crown of the head to the third eye the space between the eyebrows and then on the exhale the third eye descending straight down across the heart center to the lower belly, just in the front of the torso. Making this big loop, this big orbit, moving your energy, your chi. Just hold that breath pattern for a few breath cycles until your body tells you to let the breath, breath pattern go and completely release into your final Shavasana.
new awareness against your breath. Bringing gentle, small movements to slowly wake the body up. Being mindful of props around you. Hugging one knee at a time into your chest and rolling onto one of your sides and taking a pause there. You can always stay in fetal pose for closing class or come up to a seated position. Placing hands at heart center on Jolly Mudra in honor of celebration for practice together today. The light, the love, the teacher in me sees and honors the light, the love, the teacher in you. Namaste.